There is nothing more frustrating than being an adventure or kind of trying to finish out maybe a quest line or something along those lines. And all of a sudden you come across an NPC or a creature that just isn't cooperating. You try a whole bunch of different things and you just can't get that last little piece of information out of there, those directions you need, or maybe the location you need to actually find. Well, there is something that you can do that is under the intimidation, untrained skills, and that is coerce. Now, it sounds like it'd be something easy to do. You just kind of intimidate the person. You just kind of make them a little bit scared of you. But there's kind of a, a hitch in coerce. So let's go ahead and kind of cover that. And with that, my name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist. And let's go ahead and get into it. So coerce is that one thing that you can do that is like intimidation you see in the movies, maybe a gangster movie, maybe some type of manga, maybe some type of other popular entertainment. But coerce is that thing where you basically are going to threaten the person. Otherwise, you are going to do something if they don't give you the information they want. So let's kind of go ahead and cover it. And let's cover the little thing, the little hitch that I think this has that maybe isn't played up enough. So coerce has the auditory, concentrate, emotion, exploration, linguistic, and mental traits. So one thing to really point out here is you can't do this in encounter mode. You could do it in downtime, but at the very least you have to be in exploration mode because you have to spend a full minute. The other things are mental, linguistic, and auditory, simply because you have to be able to speak, you have to be able to be heard, and they can't be undead for this to actually work. So how it actually reads is, with threats either veiled or overt, you attempt to bully a creature into doing what you want. You must spend at least one minute of conversation with the creature. At the end of the conversation, attempt an intimidation check against the target's will DC, modified by any circumstances the GM determines. And this is that whole GM discretion thing. If that creature was a huge creature and you're a halfling trying to intimidate it, it might modify the DC, or it might be a certain situation where you seem less intimidating or you might seem more intimidating depending on what that circumstance is. Now, it does have a parenthetical comment, but we're going to go ahead and cover that more towards the end. So there are four degrees of success like normal. On the critical success, the target gives you the information you seek or agrees to follow your directives so long as they aren't likely to harm the target in any way. So you can't make that person walk off a cliff or jump on their sword. It's just not going to work. The target continues to comply for amount of time determined by the GM, but to not exceed one day. That doesn't mean you get a day. That means it can't exceed a day. And the GM is going to be the one who determines that. At which point the target becomes unfriendly if it wasn't already unfriendly or hostile. We'll go ahead and talk about those conditions a little bit at the end. However, the target is too scared of you to retaliate, at least in the short term. So on a critical success, even if the creature turns out to be hostile, they really aren't going to do anything against you, at least for a certain period of time. That's not the case with a success. On a success, it's just like a critical success. But once the target becomes unfriendly, they might decide to act against you immediately. For example, by reporting you to the authorities or assisting your enemies. So critical success is that only one that guarantees that there aren't going to be immediate repercussions. Now on a failure, the target doesn't do what you say, and if they were not already unfriendly or hostile, they become immediately unfriendly. Critical failure, the target refuses to comply, becomes hostile if they weren't already. We kind of read a bit about hostile or unfriendly, so let's go ahead and kind of cover that a little bit. Now on page 239, there is an insert that talks about the different attitudes, and there's helpful, friendly, indifferent, unfriendly, and hostile. Now, the only ones we're really going to concern ourselves with when we talk about coercion are the bottom two, and that would be unfriendly or hostile. So unfriendly is dislikes you and doesn't want to help you, and hostile means actively works against you, and they might attack you just because of their dislike. So when you coerce a creature, regardless of what they were before, they could have been the most friendly or the most helpful as far as attitudes go towards you. But as soon as you try to coerce them, they are immediately going to drop down to at the very least unfriendly and quite possibly hostile. If they're hostile, they're immediately going to try and act against you, depending on GM discretion, of course, and what the situation might actually be within that part of the adventure. But 
This is a very, very quick way to turn creatures who didn't have an agenda against you into having an agenda against you. So coercion really should be kind of the intimidation tactic of last resort. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little quick tip on coercion. It is a great, great skill action to have. It does work. It does not work in encounter mode, only works in exploration and downtime. But the caveat is they will immediately become unfriendly or hostile towards you as soon as you use it. Now, if you did happen to like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell. But whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.